talk about something serious that touches on plant-based and goes a little further. And sometimes there's a little controversy in medicine in other ways, and this quote is indeed controversial. Who is wise, he who learns from every man. It's often quoted to Benjamin Franklin, but when I grew up, it was a Yiddish proverb that my family said. So I think in Marshall, Texas, we'll give it to Benjamin Franklin, but when I speak in Manhattan, the Yiddish win. Either way, uh, in 1975, I took a young girl to my first date, and she is now my wife of 35 years, and we saw Bruce Springsteen rock it out uh, in a theater that no longer exists in Detroit. My parents thought we were at a synagogue event, but we had a whole lot more fun for four hours. And Springsteen belted out these words, don't call for your surgeon, even he says it's too late. It's not your lungs this time. It's your heart that holds your fate. And uh, tonight a little heavy, because indeed, Many of us worry about cancer and such. Well, the, the facts are breast cancer will take less than 2% of those of us in the room from this world. Heart disease and stroke will take 33% of us. One out of every three people in this room, although that statistic may be lower because of your lifestyle choice, will succumb to heart disease. I simply don't stand for that. I think it's completely a failure of the medical system. And I'd like to teach a little bit about that. But we learned again this week that there's people that don't know they have heart disease. There's people that get short of breath. There's people that get sweaty, fatigued. They have funny feelings in their chest, in their abdomen, in their arm, in their back. They feel their heart racing. They sometimes even call their friends who are doctors and say, I don't feel well. And they get advice, just stay home, don't worry about it. Well, one of those people with exactly that story didn't make it very far this week, and the world lost a great source of humor and joy and comedic talent. And Every time I see this, it makes me feel badly that we've not reached enough. We haven't done enough, and I drive on. And in fact, I collect, sadly, people who should still be here contributing and can't contribute for the exact same reason. They thought they were fine until a very bad hour took them. In the upper left was a VP of Chick-fil-A, and next to him, with a big smile and the gray hair, is James Cantalupo in the upper uh, row. He was CEO of McDonald's worldwide. He actually introduced the healthy fruit and salad, but unfortunately at a franchisee meeting in Miami a few years ago, he developed some chest discomfort, collapsed in his hotel room, and never showed up at the meeting. The woman in the middle was president of the Soccer League of Europe, who at age 54 passed away of a sudden heart attack. My dear friend in the upper right top, Imre Molnar, was one of the world's top car designers in Detroit. He was president of a university in Detroit. He kissed his little kids goodbye on a vacation two years ago took a bike ride in LA, never came back. His arteries were 99% blocked. He saw his doctor one week earlier. The lower left is a bank president, most of you recognize Tim Russert, and that's a 42-year-old IT exec in the lower right who was out jogging one day, collapsed, and on autopsy had severe advanced disease. It's a very tricky disease that's very hard to know you have it, and I'm here to clear up those myths, because it's so important that you understand that the diet that you're learning about and following is the best insurance, but it's not 100%. So don't be fooled into falsehoods that it can't happen when one out of three of us, in fact, suffer from it. One more name that's come up, and it's a remarkable story, was Oscar Munoz, who was the CEO of United Airlines for six weeks. September 1, 2015, he was appointed to one of the biggest jobs in the United States, worldwide position, had had a employment physical before he took the job. Six weeks into his job, he collapsed and had a massive heart attack. Very lucky he didn't die, but January 6, he had to have a heart transplant at Northwestern University because of the modern miracles that that can happen on occasion. He's actually returned to work. His life will never be the same with medications, checkups, and problems that will develop, but it is a miracle. But six weeks earlier, his employment physical was perfectly fine. So that's my specialty, and that's what I want to share with you from a plant-based cardiologist who's been eating plant-based for now 40 years. My goal is indeed to talk to this group and every group I can talk to about trying to prevent one million heart attacks, because we can do it, and that will take two years if people move towards plant-based nutrition and better lifestyles, and even quicker if they fully adopt them, as I'll show you. So I want to go through one quick exercise, if you'll allow me to do that. I want everybody in the room who either has heart disease or knows somebody with serious heart disease that you love, work with, or care for to raise their hand and keep it up for a minute. Okay, it's a substantial number. Now, don't put your hands down. Everybody in the room that has diabetes or knows somebody who's suffering from diabetes, medication, insulin shots, 
Put your hand up. And the last question, I'll be done. Anybody who's had cancer or knows somebody or lost somebody who's had cancer that's close, a relative, a loved one, put your hand up. So, so I look around, it's probably 90% of the room. Now keep your hand up for one more second. You know, what if 80% of those hands didn't go up? And you think about that one person, not these maybe celebrities, but one person that you know that would still be here at family gatherings in good health and enjoying and was special to you. You can put your hands down now. Because that's what we're talking about. Most people who suffer this disease don't get in headlines and don't make it on my slides, but those are the ones that we really want to reach, and that's including those of you in this room. Because indeed, the statistics are overwhelming that the majority of heart disease is lifestyle related, and the majority of heart disease can be prevented by actually simple lifestyle steps that I'll show you. Even more so, adult diabetes, an epidemic that is clearly taking over the healthcare system of this country and the Western world, is largely lifestyle related. We just had a recent medical article that showed by a simple change of plant-based diet for eight weeks, many patients who had been diabetic for up to 23 years remain non-diabetic for the next number of years by changing their diet. Remarkable data on reversing heart disease. And similarly, excuse me, diabetes. Cancer was once estimated to be 60% lifestyle related, but a recent study in the last 12 months suggests if you include air pollution, water, and other new environmental factors, Genetics may play a relatively small role in cancer. So lifestyle is the key, and nutrition is the foundation of lifestyle. There's some phenomenal data. If you look to the left of this slide, the green, these are countries that eat predominantly unprocessed plant-based foods. That's the green bars that are very tall. And the red is the rates of dying from heart disease and cancer in those countries, very small. If you look over to the uh, left of the slide, that's where the United States sits as a country that has a very small percentage of calories from unprocessed, unrefined plant-based foods and very high death rates from heart disease and cancer. Rather stunning data that needs to be taught and shared with all. If you go a little bit further into statistics, and just hang with me here, if you look at the top line, these are death rates due to coronary heart disease, basically death rates due to heart attack in either vegetarians or healthy omnivores. That's the power of this. These are not smokers, overweight, diabetic meat eaters. These are the fit meat eaters. And when you compare vegetarians to even fit omnivores, there's a 25% reduction when you take these six studies and lump them together, a 25% reduction in the risk of heart attack, even comparing to the healthy group. Very profound data. Now, if you limit it to only vegans, the numbers would be even more dramatic. But dramatic data that we can reduce dramatically the risk of heart disease through lifestyle. In fact, in two studies in the last three years involving more than 40,000 healthy people that were followed up for up to 20 years, six lifestyle factors reduced heart attacks by 85%, which is where we get to a million very quickly. You don't smoke. You be sure you walk at least 30 to 40 minutes a day, and if you want to do more, do more. You keep your waist thin, which is under 40 inches for a man and under 35 inches for a woman. You eat more than five servings of fruits and vegetables a day, which is where the Western community falls completely on its face with an average of one to two servings a day. You get seven hours of sleep at night because new science says five hours of sleep at night increases your heart attack risk. And you enjoy a few alcoholic drinks a week if you have no other health reasons or addiction reasons that you can't do that. So there is a little silver lining at the end of this list of six ways to reduce <laughs> and improve your risk of heart attack. This is powerful data, all published in the medical literature. This isn't expensive. It doesn't take a big program to do this, but it's simply not being taught enough, and we need to share it here and elsewhere. So how good is the medical community at predicting those that are going to drop of heart attacks? And indeed, even now, we're very bad at it. We have no system in place to do this routinely. No doctor could have looked at Winston Churchill and say he would never have a heart attack and live into his 90s and looked at Jim Fix, the man who wrote the book of running in the 1970s and set off the marathoning craze and predicted he would have dropped dead of a heart attack with an autopsy showing horrendous coronary artery disease at the age of 53. Indeed, his cholesterol was very high and he was quoted many times as saying, it doesn't matter at all what I eat, I run so much. He paid a severe price for that, but if he, these two gentlemen were in clinics today, they would get no better prediction of their future than they would have gotten in the years that these pictures were made. But indeed, heart disease is detectable at a very, very early stage. 
if not in this community, in a, maybe an hour drive to Tyler or a two hour drive to Dallas, and it may be the most important step you take other than changing your diet as we're describing. I wish that every one of you after this conference will go to Netflix or your library and get a movie called The Widowmaker and spend an hour learning in more detail than I can share with you about the data behind early detection of heart disease years and years before Gary Shandling dropped and Oscar Munoz went down and Tim Russert went down years and years before. And indeed there is a specialty and I am one of those that spend my entire career and others do this too on identifying very early heart disease and identifying strategies to not only find it, but reverse it, which is where plant-based nutrition comes in as the foundation. There are CAT scans, there's laboratory studies, there are ultrasounds, increasingly we're using genetic testing, and major advances are being made, but it's prime time right now. There's nothing in futuristic about this at all. In fact, it's been in place for a number of years. So I want you just for a minute to look at this screen. There's A, B, and C. This is a test called a coronary artery calcium scan. It's a CAT scan, it takes about one minute. You lie down, you hold your breath, you get up, you go home. There's no IV, there's no iodine, there's no allergy, there's no exercise. Pretty easy test. I've had it done twice in my life. And it turns out as a miracle, the heart normally has no calcium. The heart is blood and fat and muscle and some collagen, but there is no calcium in a normal heart and there is calcium in every plaque that's in heart arteries, and CAT scans love to show calcium. That's what's in bones. So panel A is a 55-year-old person with a good cholesterol who, fortunately, has not a speck of calcium. That's called a score of zero. That person wins the prize and got a very good result from this one-minute test. In the middle is somebody that has a couple white flecks. They happen to be in a rather bad area called the left main and left anterior descending heart artery, the widowmaker but it's still relatively early and will be relatively easy to reverse that plaque. And the person on the right, number C, who feeling no pain, playing tennis, running in squash and on a treadmill, working and planning for retirement and uh, vacations around the world, has no clue that all that white indicates advanced severe disease that dramatically puts their health at risk. In fact, how much risk, if you look at the colored lines for CACS, coronary artery calcium score, the yellow line is a group of patients who scored a zero, the good number, followed for up to 15 years, and their risk of having a heart attack over 15 years approaches 1%. The red line are people with a calcium score over 400. I have patients that are over 4,000 because the number can be that high. But over 400, there's a 25% chance of having a heart attack in the next 10 years. 25 times higher by a test that takes one minute when you're 45 or 50, even though you feel good, because once you smoked or sometimes your blood pressure's up or you used to be a meat eater or you don't exercise as much as you should and you simply don't know, like Gary Shandling had no clue. There are other ways that don't involve a CAT scan. There's an ultrasound done of carotid arteries to the brain. It requires special equipment. Uh, there are centers in Dallas that do it. My clinic does it in Detroit. But for those that need to avoid radiation exposure, it's an alternative. And you can tell a 50-year-old that their arteries are 70 years old and they better start making dramatic lifestyle changes. And the final and the most important component is the lack of vitamin H. That's what I call it. The lack of hope. Well, why bother get these tests? What can be done about it? I'll just keep on doing what I'm doing, heart disease doesn't go away, when in fact it does. And it is reversible, and it is a paper tiger in its development, as Dr. Esselstyn says, and it's a paper tiger in uh, suggesting we only manage it, we don't reverse it. On the right is, in my opinion, one of the most famous research results ever in the history of cardiology, at least in my 26 years in practice. It's the data from Dr. Dean Ornish, where a group of serious heart patients were asked to have three heart catheterizations at baseline, at one year, and at five years, an invasive study up the leg or arm using dye. These were analyzed by a computer. They were very similar groups at the beginning, but one group was told, go follow whatever your cardiologist says. They do a good job. They know how to treat heart disease. Over the five years, that's the line that's going up because heart disease gets more and more and more blocked over time, even with traditional approaches. Dr. Ornish learned some interesting things in India and took his group of patients and said, we want you to eat only plants without vegetable oils. We want you to walk. 
and you have to manage your stress with yoga, meditation, and group support. And over the years, his patients cleared out their arteries so at the end of five years, there were far fewer patients having balloons, stents, bypasses, and that were dead because of a treatment that involved a plate, a fork, and some gym shoes. It's such powerful data as Dr. Ornish continued to track his patients that Medicare has approved only one eating program for heart patients to reverse heart disease, and it is exactly this data. On the right is a famous picture from Dr. Esselstyn's group that did a very similar program at the Cleveland Clinic. I'll talk more about that tomorrow. But a very badly blocked artery in a surgeon in panel A became nearly normal three years later without a stent, without a bypass, simply by changing their diet and eating the way that uh, Mayor Smith and others in this town are now doing, which is to your credit. There, excuse me, are some interesting hope we can go beyond. Nutrition, although it's a foundation, this is just an example of a published research study using a very interesting vitamin mix that in people with very high calcium scores, the test I showed you, this is a calcium score in one man that was 1900, then one year later was zero, because changed the diet and used advanced technologies with other nutritional support. So it's a very exciting time to find out if you've got heart disease and find out how you can get rid of it because that will improve the health in your family and the health in America. So wrapping up, I feel in my practice it is just unconscionable to hear about these people that have access to the best doctors, the best systems, the best insurance, and sadly never got told what you now know. You now know more about heart disease detection, prevention, and reversal than sadly most doctors and certainly most of the public. There's simply no reason not to take this information and make sure you get the right check as you pursue this awesome diet that you're following and learning about this weekend. Because the end result will be families that will be kept together, families that aren't ripped apart, jobs that aren't uh, losing a leader and disrupting whole industries, as often happens as they search for a CEO who suddenly went down. And it's so important to embrace this for your own health and your own protection. I circle back to Springsteen, when it comes to luck, you make your own. So you gotta be proactive, you gotta read, you gotta learn, and you gotta take care of your own health, because you simply, in most medical centers, won't learn what you're gonna learn from people like Chef AJ and Miyoko and others this weekend. So I just conclude, I think it's not only a lofty goal, I think it's actually a very reachable goal that you know, if you take what I've talked about today and teach others and others and others, there's no reason Marshall, Texas can not only be known as an all-American city, as a amazingly vegan supportive city, but it also is one of the lowest heart attack rate cities in the United States and it can start today. So I thank you for your attention.